I've been wanting to do a GURPS kind of ultralight combat scenario walkthrough for a long time. Tonight I'm going to actually sit down and I think roll through this. <laughs> the current events these days, there uh, may be a few people looking to um, leave behind their, <laughs> their fifth edition of a certain game and uh, explore other systems. So tonight this one's uh, for you guys who are looking for a new home, maybe wanting to try out uh, if you're GURPS curious and you've been wanting to try out something new. So here's here's a quick look at um, the character sheets that uh, we use for our old school style um, D and D. Uh, we like to have just I, we just pared it down um, to make it quick and simple. We roll these stats up with 3d6, uh, and we can crank these characters out pretty quick. We give them one advantage, one disadvantage. And we roll their hit points and fatigue. Uh, you can see here, for anybody new to GURPS, this is your stats. This is all you get. Strength, dex, IQ, and health. Your secondaries are perception and willpower. And your move. Then you'll get a dodge and a parry. And a block if you have a shield. Um, and parry is based on your skill with whatever weapon you're parrying with. So you'll have a vastly different parry skill with a sword versus your pole arm or your quarter staff, for instance, or your dagger, um, your hit points. Um, so average, uh, is tens for all of these, uh, all of these things. Since the game is built on a 3d6, 50% of the time you're going to roll a 10 or under. So as you can see here, we'll use poor Therian. This was an elf, uh, who died in my adventure, paralyzed and eaten by a chthonic worm. We've got a little setup here. We're gonna say we've got four heroes. We've got a fighter, a cleric. I'm gonna put the fighter here. Cleric um, number one is a uh, thief, and we'll say number five is is a wizard. We've got the skulls, our goblins. Here's a fat goblin leader, and then a couple a couple uh, dire wolves. We'll say. Okay, we're gonna roll through just a quick combat. This is uh, some super light combat, quick combat rules. Um, as people will tell you, GURPS has a lot of depth and a lot of uh, crunch to their rules. There's a ton of rules, but they're all they're all optional. Tonight we're gonna just, just pare them down and try and use um, just the rules that that are fun and keep it going and um, make it easier for people to learn with. So right off the bat, we're gonna roll 1d6 for each side to see who goes first. You could roll for each each person, whatever you want doesn't really matter. Heroes go first, level to five, so they start moving. I'm gonna use, we're gonna simply use, um, we're gonna ignore the GURPS maneuvers and we're just gonna, everything is a move and then you get an attack. Move is five, one, two, three, four. This guy's gonna move up here. Uh, one, two, the wizard will move uh, up here around the corner and peer around. Cleric will stomp in, one, two, three, four. Five. Oh, these guys are moving pretty fast. Um, we would uh, lessen their move due to weight of their armor, we'll say. But for now, we'll just make everybody this guy. One, two, three. This will be the thief. Uh, four. Uh, let's say he tries to... He's going to try and just hide behind here. Just kind of get out of sight, disappear. So in GURPS, uh, you have a skill in everything, and the skill is typically between 10 and 20, uh, and that is the value you try to roll under with 3d6. The Game Master will give you a, a modifier to your skill, but say my skill is 12. He's got a, a 12 stealth. Because of combat, nobody's paying attention to him very closely. I'm gonna give him a plus two. So his skill goes from 12 to 14. Now roll under that with 3d6. There we have it, we have a nine. He succeeds nicely. We can, if somebody's trying to spot him, we'll say this guy in the back is kind of trying to survey the area better. He rolls his perception. We'll say his perception, it's based off of IQ by default. We'll say he's kind of a smart for, for a goblin. He's got a perception up there of 11. So he's gonna roll 11, needs to roll an 11 and he rolls a 12, he fails. Um, if he had have rolled a nine, a 10 say, he makes it by one. 
my stealth made it by uh, what did I say? He made it by three or four. Um, you can you can um, compare how much you succeed by to uh, break tiebreakers if they both succeed. At any rate, my uh, thief is stealthed. He is out of sight and not being watched. Okay, and let's get right into the combat. These guys move up, and this fighter is going to make a grab. It's going to make a grab for that dire wolf. Therefore, he needs to roll under his dexterity. We'll say, <laughs> we'll use this guy's stats as dexterity. He's got an eight, and that's not great, but um, ah, we'll say the, the wolf is so big and shaggy. We'll give him a plus one on that. Easy to grab a hold of since he's just going to grab. He tries to grab, he needs a, he needs a, uh, so eight plus one. So he needs a nine. I just rolled a crit failure. He's on the edge of this here cliff, it looks like. I'm gonna make him, uh, he now has to roll a dexterity check to keep his footing or he'll fall off. I'll give him a plus two, since he wasn't really that close. He needs a 10 or less to stay up. And he rolls an 11. The fighter falls <laughs> and splashes into the water below. The cleric is up here and he's gonna try and shove the dog off seeing his comrade go down. Maybe he doesn't see because there's a wall there. He's gonna make a strike. Um, again, he can just roll um, his dexterity. We'll say he's got uh, a shove. We'll give him a plus two. I'm the game master. I tell him he's got plus two. It's a tenor left to shove. He lands a shove on the dire wolf, okay? The dire wolf will attempt to dodge. We'll say uh, it has uh, a typical dodge would be um, eight. We'll give him an eight to dodge. It'll attempt to dodge out of the way and it does so. Um, failed shove. Okay, over here we've got the mage. Now, there's a book for magic um, in GURPS. It's almost 300 pages long. There's over 600 spells in here. Um, anybody who wants to play uh, a wizard, this, the potential in GURPS um, will keep you, uh, keep you busy. Great enchantment rules, stuff like that too. We'll say this guy has fireball. He, in uh, GURPS you use your, ma your mana points or your fatigue points if you're out of mana points to cast your spells. He's going to cast a 3d6. Uh, damage fireball. It's variable. Um, it, you can charge it up farther depending on your majory skill, how uh, well, how skilled you are at majory. We'll say this guy has a majory level three uh, and he is going to put uh, 3d6 worth of damage into his fireball he's conjuring. That will take him three rounds to conjure that size of a uh, no, he can do, he's got th level three. He can do that in one round. He's gonna cast the fireball spell. Here it goes, okay? We'll say he's got like a 12. Oh, I just rolled a 12. Say he's got a 12 in, um, in fireball spell. Each spell in GURPS, you learn, you sink uh, experience points into, they're called character points. You sink character points into spells just like you would a skill. Uh, and you can get good at certain spells and you can neglect other spells uh, and you won't be as um, good at casting them and you'll fail more often and waste the mana. He just barely makes it. He casts his spell. He is summoning the fireball. It's a 3d6 fireball that forms in his hand and it is ready to go for next round. He can throw it, cast it. Um, who we got left here? Uh, oops, it looks like I've bumped a, a few things here. My bad. Okay, we've got the thief. He is in stealth mode. We'll say, we'll say it's dusk, and he is able to stealth right up there. He kind of sneaks in behind this action, and he's kind of hiding behind the stair, the spiral stairwell here. Now it's the bad guy's turn. Um, this one will rush. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's gonna rush. He can move. He's a dog. He's faster than a man. He rushes six up to the. Uh, we'll see as he runs by if he notices he'll make a perception check. This guy made his by three um, The dog will have a perception of like nine ten. Um, he rolls a ten. He makes it but not enough to notice uh, He made it by more so the dog runs by in its excitement and makes a chomp at the wizard. Here goes He's got a, a biting skill. We'll say attack of like 12 
he rolls an 11 and hits. Now, uh, he's casting a spell, so if he doesn't want to lose that spell, he's gonna have to make a concentration check, a le uh, um, an IQ check. We'll say he's a pretty smart guy, we'll give him a 13, say a 14 IQ, I need a 14 or less. Um, oh, oh, we'll roll this after he gets hit. He will try to dodge. He needs an eight, he takes the damage, and uh, we'll say uh, the dog bites him for 1d6 damage. Um, okay, so he takes two damage, and we'll add, subtract two from his IQ check. So he needs a 12 or less. Uh, and he rolls a 10, so he keeps the spell. Looks like his target is going to be that dog for that fireball spell. Now, the, um, oh yeah, the, the fighter was in the drink. That's where he was. Up here, we've got a dire wolf and a goblin picking on the cleric. Okay, so the dire wolf, I said uh, they attack with a 12. He needs a 12 or less to hit the cleric. He hits. The cleric's got a shield. We'll say he's got a shield skill of 10. He's gonna try to block. He needs a 10 or less. He fails, critically fails. He drops the shield, we'll say. He loses it, uh, spins on his arm or something malfunction in some way so he loses the use of his shield for the next turn now the dog um, bites and ooh, six damage now this guy's wearing some heavy armor he's got a damage resistance of five we'll say damage resistance subtracts five off of any damage he receives so that's six he only takes one damage from the bite one damage gets through the goblin stabs at him with a sword. He's got a, he's got a short sword. He needs a 12. He's got a short sword skill of 12. He needs a 12 or less. And we have a miss here. So he swings into the flurry, into the action, the foray, and misses. No need to dodge or parry or block on the part of this guy. You can dodge. Um, you can dodge as many strikes as you uh, want. Uh, you can only parry once. Uh, each subsequent parry gives you a minus four to the chance to parry the next one. Um, I like to add a minus one to each subsequent dodge as well, but that is a house rule of mine. That's just preference. Don't feel the need to. Okay, um, we'll come back to the good guys. Um, oh, this guy moved up. We'll say he not, knocks a um, an arrow in a short bow. He's going to try it. Actually, he'll try and take out the king just so we can get some uh, ranged damage. Uh, range combat into this. So, fireball. Our mage, he has the fireball. Um, now he rolls to strike, to, to cast, to throw the fireball. Now that's, a, that's another skill called innate attack. We'll say he's got a 12 in aiming these things. So he's got a 12. There's no range penalty here. He's right up against the, the dog. He needs a 12 or less, and that is a hit. The fireball is just going to wash over this guy's torso. Dog will try to dodge. He's got an eight. He needs an eight or less. He dodges, and sadly, the fireball just heads off into the distance. The mana has been spent for the casting. That would be three mana gone, and he is ineffective uh, with his spell. And down here, we've got the, the fighter uh, splashing around in the water. Now, we'll say he took... Uh, 2d6 of damage from the fall. He's also wearing heavy damage, uh, heavy plate though, so he's, his damage, his damage resistance is 5, so he takes 7. He'll only take 2 from the fall, but he is in the drink, so he's going to try and swim. I'll say he's got a swim skill. He's able to swim, but he's wearing heavy plate, so that's going to be minus 4 to swim. That's, uh, I'm going to make that call as Game Master. So his swim is down to 8. He needs an 8 or less, and he does it. He swims enough to get over it and grabs a rock. He took a little bit of damage from the fall, but he's just wet and embarrassed at this point. Uh, now we've got the cleric. He's going to try and mace. Uh, oh, um, did he grab? Uh, he he uh, tried to shove the dog and, uh, and missed. He's going to try and bring down his mace. Just a straight up attack. He's got a mace of 12, we'll say. So that is a 10. That is a hit. The dog, the dire wolf, will try to dodge with it. He needs an eight or less, and he does so with a six. These, these dogs are uh, dodging everything. Um, let's say, um, uh, let's fast forward and get to the 
range attack. Now, we can, there, there are range tables um, that you can consult for GURPS. Let's keep it simple. Uh, I've kind of got it memorized, one, two, three, four. He's only about four or five away. That's a minus two, I believe, to range. Um, he will take, he, let's say he has spent a whole round aiming. That will give him a plus one to his bow of 12. So he's got 13 minus two because of the range. Uh, and maybe he's got partial cover, well, not partial, yeah, a bit of cover. Uh, I'll give him an additional two, um, minus two, because he's got to shoot past this dog. So he's, let's say he's got an eight, he needs an eight to hit. He will let loose the arrow and it misses, okay? It misses. Let's say the arrow hits the goblin, okay? The goblin um, does get a chance to dodge. He sees it coming. He's a fat goblin, he needs a seven to dodge. He fails, okay, he takes the arrow. He's wearing, we'll say the goblin uh, leader is fat and wearing leather armor, damage resistance of two. It's only a DR2. The incoming arrow is 1d6 impaling, we'll say, okay. Here's where damage um, types uh, make GURPS combat more interesting. Um, the mace, Attack was just a blunt, no damage difference, but 1d6 impaling from the arrow. Um, impaling damage is doubled. Anything that hits flesh is doubled. So with a damage resistance of two from the armor on the goblin, uh, he gets three damage on him. Okay, so two uh, is subtracted from three, so it only takes one damage. However, because it's an arrow and they bite deep, you double that damage that got through. So he actually takes two damage. So it's still just a flesh wound, but he's got an arrow stuck in him and he's gonna feel that. And so it goes. Um, that would be the simplest, most streamlined GURPS combat um, I can think of and I could probably um, roll with. Everybody makes their move, everybody makes their attack, everybody can dodge multiple attacks with a cumulative minus one is how I roll with it that's my house roll and anybody can parry but it's a minus four for each subsequent parry um, you need a weapon to parry with blah, blah blah your parry is based on your skill with your weapon as I mentioned spell casting um, you need the skill uh, for each spell you need to know the spell and have a skill in it to cast it and as I mentioned, um, any skill test challenge is always roll 3d6 under your skill ability. There may be modifiers imposed on you by the game master, but that is it. That is uh, the skinny on how to play GURPS in a nice little fantasy uh, combat. Um, so hopefully some newcomers will find this uh, intriguing enough to look into GURPS. I suggest uh, GURPS Light or GURPS Ultralight if you like this kind of easy uh, streamlined combat. You don't need the rest of the details. And um, yeah, I hope uh, everybody enjoys some, some GURPS in the coming months, weeks, years. Roll on.